The Line 6 Helix is considered to be the quintessential all-in-one floor unit. But the thing is really expensive and it's enormous. It won't sit on your desk and it won't fit in your bag. They actually sell a giant backpack for the thing because it's so huge. So the perfect Helix Substitute has the same Line 6 models and software, has the same amount of digital signal processing power available, has more foot switches than the HX Stomp, but still has controlled audio input and output blocks, as well as the computer audio interface. That substitute is an HX Stomp together with an HX effects. You don't need more than an HX stomp. I stand by that. But if you had some extra money and you wanted to get the most value for it, the HX effects together with an HX stomp gives you all the features and capabilities of a Helix at half the cost. But Billy, aren't the HX effects unit and the HX stomp kind of the same thing? Not quite. There's a lot of overlap but they're not the same thing. Each has about half of the digital signal processing capability as the full-size Helix. In fact, each unit is designed to be half a Helix, but not the same half. For instance, the Stomp is tiny. It only has three foot switches and it gives you three snapshots per patch. The effects unit has plenty of foot switches and they even have the little LED scribble strips above them. And it also features four snapshots per patch. But the effects unit doesn't have any input or output control blocks, no amp or cab models, there's no audio interface to a computer, no headphones, and no master volume knob. It also doesn't have the display, but instead it embeds the display across the scribble strips. But if you use these two units together, you get everything you could possibly get from the full-size Helix. And it's better than Helix because you can still use the components independently. Like when I play my guitar with headphones at the coffee shop, I just sit my HX stomp right there on the table. If you're lugging your full-size Helix into Starbucks and slamming that thing down on the table to play guitar with headphones, you're a psycho. Now the main reason to use the HX effects together with the HX stomp is the extra DSP, or digital signal processing power. By freeing up space in the stomp, you can use multiple amps or other really resource heavy effects like pitch shifters, the poly capo. And on the effects unit, since you're not running amps and cabs, you have more digital signal processing allocation available for effects like reverbs and delays. So the way I like to use them together is this. I like all the effects per se to be on the effects unit. And then I like amps and cabs and EQs and everything else to be on the stomp. Essentially, this became my pedal board and I'm using the stomp in place of an amp because I can't use an amp where I play. But I can also use the stomp for EQs, post effects, or even pre effects like the gate. That's what enables me to run dual amps in the stomp, which I love. I like to use different amps together if I have time to fiddle with it. Or even if I'm using the same amp twice, I can adjust the parameters so that they're different and therefore they are each gonna react with the rest of the signal chain differently. It makes the sound bigger, it makes everything more interesting. Aside from the amps, the stomp is gonna be running impulse responses or cabinet emulations. I even keep an auto swell block on there that I can activate with a button just because I have the DSP available. So if I don't have something set up on this for a swell, I just hit a button on my stomp and I can sound like whales. The method with which I use to run them together is called the four cable method. So the signal travels from the guitar to the front end of the effects unit, and it's gonna hit some effects, usually overdrives. Then it's gonna leave the effects unit on the effects loop and go into the front end of the stomp. And that's where it's gonna hit the amp and maybe the cab. And then it's going to leave the stomp go back to the effects unit. And then it's gonna hit wet effects and other blocks that I would want to happen after the amp. Finally, it leaves the effects unit to return to the stomp, which I like to have as last because it has that control output block. EQs or compressors could also go at the end of the chain if I wanted it to seem more like a studio, something in post. So in this way, each unit is separated into two parts. FXA, stomp A, FXB, stomp B, and then to the front of the house. One reason I do that is so that I can swap out the stomp for my amp when I'm practicing at home. Or if I had an alternate pedal board, 
I could swap that out for the effects unit and run it with the stomp where all my amps are and it would all work exactly the same. But I don't have money like that and I don't even think it would sound better. This is my minimum viable pedal board of cheap Amazon pedals. Comment below if you want me to do a video on these. It does the thing, but barely. The truth is there's nothing that's going to give me every effect at a price that I could afford, except a multi-effects unit. But you might be thinking, why use a Line 6 product for both? Why not use something else for one component or the other? That way you don't have any overlap and functionality. Yeah, I know how gear math works. The thing is, I've planted a flag in the Line 6 ecosystem because I've learned and put a lot of time and effort into learning how to use those effects and those models. I understand how a lot of it works and I'm getting better at it all the time. And I don't wanna to have to start from scratch with a whole other platform. And now I can reap the benefit of having learned how to use all that stuff. The best gear is the gear you know how to use. David squared off against a giant with a rock and a sling when the king's own armor and sword were made available to him because he knew what he was about. Plus, using Line 6 products for both components gives me the ability to move blocks from one unit to the other seamlessly. It's literally copy and paste. And that goes back to the main reason I use four cable method is because I want to be able to put any effect anywhere in the signal chain. For instance, I could run this rig without four cable if I put the stomp in front of or behind the effects unit, but then the only way to get effects before and after the amp would be to run some of them on the stomp unit. But I really love all the effects being on the effects unit so that I can use them with other gear besides the stomp. The other thing I do with this rig is I run MIDI between the units both ways. So when I press a button to change the preset, it changes on both units. Also the tap tempo on the effects unit controls the tap tempo on the stomp, so I only have to deal with one of them. There's actually a ton of things you can do to make these units work together with MIDI, and it's all built in. There's even a command center, they call it, to set it all up and control it using snapshots or foot switches or a mix of the two. Comment below if you want that video. So here's the whole rig. I call it the Megazord because I liked Power Rangers when I was a kid. I do use an expression pedal that gets plugged into the effects unit. Here's the first one I tried. Do not buy this expression pedal. It's terrible, borderline useless. Actually, during production of this video, it went dead, it broke, and now it is useless. And currently, it is in the very bottom of the garbage can. Here's the one I just ordered. It's the smallest expression volume pedal that I could find on the market. Sonic Cake, Vexpress, whatever. I actually really like it so far. It seems to work great. I love the size. Time will tell whether it holds up. It was only 40 bucks. I also have my trusty foot switch accessory plugged into the stomp, because why not? But I almost never use it for anything when I'm running the Megazord. I just don't need it. It's just there to make the Megazord rig that much more awesome. Let's talk about a few drawbacks. The pedal interface on the effects unit is really annoying and it's not anywhere near as easy to use as the stomp. And the way I run it, since most of the effects are on the effects unit, that's where I'm always having to make a last minute tweak. Another thing is that it seemed like a lot of plugging and unplugging all the time. I could get a pedal board to mount it to, but then it's getting so bulky and expensive, why not get a Helix? The first thing I did to overcome this was make myself a little custom three foot snake to run between them, but it was still a little annoying. And after a while, I would look down at the rig when I'm ready to clean up and I would think, why am I even unplugging this? So to eliminate the plugging and unplugging, I actually started using this reusable shopping bag for my little pedal gig bag. The mouth is so wide that I can just coil everything up and shovel it in there without unplugging anything. It works great. And the other musicians look at me funny whenever they see me do it, which is an added bonus. The really big drawback for running the rig this way is that the gate on the stomp is very difficult to use because it's after the overdrive pedals. A gate is gonna work best when it's near the front of the signal chain because a gate functions better when the signal is smaller. After I've run through overdrive pedals and probably a delay, and then it gets to the gate, it really confuses it. And I don't even use it really. But this problem has actually contributed to the next evolution in the Megazord rig. I'll show you that in the next free video. Click here.